Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen. And my guest today is, and I'm going to screw this up. No, I won't. It's easy. Pete McCall. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing today? Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm really happy to have you here. And um, Pete's going to tell you a little bit about himself and why he came to write the book, a book, the book that uh, is his yeah. latest book. You have more than one. So tell yeah, us about the, that the too. Second, and, yeah, the second I'm working on it. Well, first of all, Susan, thank you for having me mm -hmm. as a guest on the podcast. And to the listener out there, thank you so much for letting me let me spend a little bit of time with you. Um, I am, as I was telling Susan, I'm actually starting a new job right now as the director of Na National Director of Fitness Education. And what that means is I work for, I'm going to be working for a health club company writing the education or overseeing the education of their entire fitness staff. But before that, I worked out, I was a consultant for the fitness industry where I worked with health club companies. I worked with certification organizations mm -hmm. and equipment companies, educating personal trainers. I've been doing fitness education for almost two decades now. Wow. I've worked directly for uh, certification organizations. I consulted with them and yeah, I just, I kind of am seen as a, as a go-to person on, understanding how the body responds to exercise. And, and that's kind of what led me to, to writing the book, Ageless Intensity, is over the last number of years, with high intensity exercise being so popular, I've worked on a number of continuing education programs for personal trainers and fitness professionals to help them learn how to use high intensity exercise properly. But in reading through the research, there's one thing that kind of kept popping up over and over again, and that's the fact that high intensity exercise produces many of the hormones that can slow down the effects of the aging process. Mm -hmm. And so that's what ageless intensity goes into is ageless intensity talks about it's a higher intensity exercise that could have a better response for slowing down the effects of aging than just low or moderate intensity exercise. And then, and then the, 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 the backup to that is I also wrote it for the over 50, for the exercise enthusiast mm -hmm. over the age of 50 who wants to know what they should be doing for workouts because we have to keep in mind that the modern fitness industry only started in 1970. So people in their seventies now who've been exercising their entire lives have literally grown up with the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time that we have people in their sixties and seventies who are so incredibly fit because they've been exercising their entire life. Yeah. They just want to know what to do. And so I try to write a book to be that a resource for that population. No, I think that's, that's, that's really great for, for all, for that whole area, you know, that whole age group. Um, <clears throat> because I think that, and, and if you want to throw COVID in as well, right? People, a lot of people don't know necessarily what they, what to do. Some of them, their gyms closed down and they knew what they did then right? They knew, oh, I go to, I, this is, this is, I do these exercises. I do use these machines. I do da, 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 da. But then all of a sudden they don't have access to the machines anymore, or any of those kind of things. Um, and depending on where they live, you know, they hit winter time or summertime and it's either way too hot to go outside or way too cold. Um, and then it's, then, then you're looking at it going, oh God, okay, so what do I buy? that will get me over this, this period. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing is we don't need a lot of equipment uh -huh. for being able to exercise at home. And, mm -hmm. and ironic, my first book, you alluded to, to the fact that, that I, I wrote my first book, Smarter Workouts, uh -huh. which actually, yeah. unfortunately, I mean, good news, bad news. It sold really well during the pandemic because in Smarter, uh, during quarantine, because in Smarter Workouts, mm -hmm. I use my experience as a personal trainer and I teach the reader how to do workout programs using only one piece of equipment. Because wow. every personal trainer knows that when the gym is busy, like if you're my client and it's a busy gym, I'm gonna take you in a little corner and I might have two or three pieces of equipment, but I'm, and I'm gonna be able to give you an entire workout. Mm. And so I wrote the book, Smarter Workouts, to, oh. to teach both personal trainers and the average consumer how to design workouts using only one piece of equipment. Okay. Little did I know that a year and a half, two years, it was released in early 19, uh, in 2019. Uh -huh. And little did I know, you know, a year later that people would need that information. But 
you don't need the point is you don't need a lot of equipment at home if you know what to do if you know how to move your body and know how to use movement based exercises as opposed to muscle isolation exercises and what i mean by that susan is for years exercise has been kind of led by the bodybuilding side of things mm -hmm. where bodybuilders yeah. have to isolate a muscle so it looks good up on a stage mm -hmm. well majority of people don't need to exercise like that we don't need to train like a bodybuilder yeah. we should train like an athlete where we use movement patterns mm -hmm. where we use a whole body movement pattern to become better at hinging from the hips for example so that's really okay. what i also try to teach people is how to do movement-based exercises based on how their body is designed to move as opposed to isolation exercises, which uh -huh. in, in all facts, I mean, the body is not, our, our joints are not designed to function in mm. an isolated system or as an isolated unit. Right, right, right. Same, very similar to diet, right? I mean, in food, it's the same kind of thing. Um, interesting. So I'm assuming that you also in there talk about um, how to get the aerobic exercise that you need as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I refer to it though as metabolic conditioning. Okay. Um, because here's the thing, if you're doing cardio, if if you if you're breathing, you're doing cardio. <laughs> right That's now true. you and you're I are walking. talking, we're breathing. Right. So technically we got we got um oxygen coming in and carbon dioxide going out. Uh -huh. And when you talk in terms of exercise, an exercise is a little bit more specific to talk about metabolic conditioning because we have two different primary metabolic pathways. We either produce energy with oxygen or we produce energy without oxygen. When oh. we produce energy with oxygen, it's at lower intensity and we can tend to metabolize more fat. Mm -hmm. And when we work at a higher intensity, we metabolize exercise, we can create energy without oxygen and we burn more net calories. So I kind of go, I, I try to, in both books, I try, to, I try to provide the reader with an overview of that science so uh -huh. they understand, hey, if I do this type of intensity, I should get this result. I should yeah. get this outcome. Yeah. And that's, I mean, for my career, I've been educating personal trainers. So I've been trying to help make this, the, the science of exercise a little bit easier to understand. And uh -huh. so that's why I try to bring to the books I write is, is to say, all right, th this might seem complicated, but here's how it really works. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, no, I think that's, I think that's great. Yeah, that um, I'll have to, I'll have to get a copy of that, that earlier book. That sounds like, sounds perfect for still being at home and, um, you know, we, my husband and I walk a lot and he does a lot of weights and stuff, but I'm still trying to kind of build up a little bit. I had a, an accident a couple of years ago and mm. <clears throat> never quite COVID got in and that never got, quite got back to the, to the gym to start building my muscles back up again. So that sounds like it'd yeah. be a, a great reference. Well, it, it, no, it, it will be, and, and two, but just so you know that uh -huh. no matter what, we, we can develop muscles at any age. That's mm -hmm. one of the cool things that we're seeing with, with such a fit population as they uh -huh. age is people in their 70s and 80s can even add muscle. So that's, that's an important message, not just for you, but for listeners, because yeah. a lot of people might think, well, I'm older, should I really be strength training? And the mm -hmm. answer is unequivocally, yes, absolutely, yeah. you should be strength training, no matter what age you are. Well, yeah, especially because it's so good for your bones as well. Right? Not, bones not just and the muscles. muscles. I mean, yeah. Well, one of, the, one, of, one of the benefits is carbohydrate metabolism. And that's mm -hmm. like you say, walking. Walking's an awesome. Trust me, I mean, after we get done with this conversation, my workout for the day is going to be a three mile walk around my neighborhood. I got a ah. couple of hills, but, but I love uh -huh. one or two times a week, I go for a long workout. It's kind of like my recovery workout. Uh -huh. But so walking, so I love walking as a form of yeah. exercise, but what walking does not do is walking does not use carbohydrate metabolism. At a lower intensity like walking, our muscles will use primarily fat for fuel. It, it, maybe if you're walking yeah. up a steep hill for a little bit of time, they might metabolize a little bit of carbohydrate because okay. carbohydrate provides energy quicker than fat metabolism will. But at lower intensities, okay. we that metabolize primarily fat for fuel. But at uh -huh. higher intensity, and like during strength training, muscle cells use carbohydrate for energy during strength training. So mm -hmm. one of the big benefits about strength training for aging is to really reduce the risk of, of diabetes, of onset diabetes, uh -huh. because you're, you're, they're different enzymes. Fat and carbohydrates have different enzymes that help metabolize them in the muscle cells. Mm -hmm. And so by doing strength training, 
your body, your muscles are going to be more effective at carbohydrate metabolism. So it will help regulate blood insulin a little bit easier. I mean, huh. I, 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 and that was one of those things that didn't occur to me until reading through the research for the book. And I was yeah. kind of like, I'm like, oh, okay. You, you, I kind of just put a few things together. And if we're not doing strength training as we age, my grandfather, I, I, write, I write an introduction about my two grandfathers. My grandpa, John, had both his legs amputated as, as a result of diabetes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and having had a bad back. So it was just something that I've always paid attention to is that the fact that we are at a higher risk of, of developing certain diseases as we age. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. For sure. And, and diabetes, I don't know, is that, is that getting more prevalent these days? or less because i know for a while it seemed to be very very pre prevalent i i'm not you know i'm not 100 percent sure i think it's it stayed relatively consistent i yeah. think it's just people don't realize the role that exercise plays in helping reduce the risk i mean because we don't need to develop right. i mean diabetes just means there's an imbalance between hormone production and one of the mm. greatest benefits of of exercise is helping regulate overall energy and hormone production in the body Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it just, yeah, it's one of those things where it always amazes me just like of how people, because I've, I've worked in the fitness industry for more than 20 years. So everybody I know is like active and exercises. So it just, it's always, I, I just, I need to do a better job of understanding what the non-exerciser thinks and feels, because I know that's probably the, the predominant view in the society. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I think that the biggest thing with that is that people are well maybe two two things are kind of linked together which is that number one when people decide oh yeah i'm going to start a strength training or, or an exercise program or whatever they they tend to overdo it to start with yeah which means 100%. that they get sore or they get hurt which means that they stop right and yeah. and then they don't yeah. go back because they're yeah. afraid they're going to do it again and then you've also got the other people who start doing it, but they may be doing the wrong things for what they want help with. Well, and, it, and again, you know, they'll, they'll stop because it's not helping with whatever they thought what they were, they were working on. And, and that's really where, I mean, and keep in mind, I've been, I've been educating personal trainers yeah. for years. And, and having worked for, for the, the American Council on Exercise, uh, and that's the primary certification, that's one of the primary certifications. So for years, I've always recommended that if somebody, if, if you wanna learn an exercise program that's right for you, it's worth a little bit of money to invest in a personal trainer. It really yeah. is. And I, and I, it's one of those things of like, and, and the analogy I always use, Susan, is I could cut my own hair, I could look in the mirror and try to use clippers and cut my own hair, but I don't because I need the, I need the expertise of a stylist or, or a barber, right? right? Yep. I mean, there are a lot of things yeah. that we hire professionals for and, and hiring a good personal trainer, you get somebody who can say, all right, based on what you need, you're telling me you need, here's the exercises for you. Mm -hmm. And they don't even need to stay with you all the time. And I think that's where some people yeah. get a little bit, I don't want to have to overpay. Well, if you tell a trainer, hey, I just want to work with you for three to five hours, three to five sessions, to yeah. learn a few exercises I can do on my own, that's a very reasonable goal. And I know myself, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'd love to help you with that because yeah, yeah that, you know, it gives you a very finite specific outcome. No, I think that, I think that's a, that's a great suggestion, you know? Um, and, and I, and even, you know, when people do join gyms, <clears throat> a lot of the time they're, they're, allowed if you want to call it that or part of their new gym membership is having a personal training session or two with somebody who Correct. will help them set up right and a lot of people don't take advantage of it no and and, and look in a hundred percent full disclosure those those sessions are sometimes there number one you're, you're, you need to do a health screening of all new members but number two is you want to introduce you want to establish a relationship Mm -hmm. I might be the personal trainer, you might be the member who joined, I at least want to establish a relationship so you had a point of contact in the health club. And mm -hmm. even though you might not become a client right now, you at least have somebody, a point of reference. And, and so mm -hmm. for listeners out there, health clubs want you to use that because that's a way that you have kind of somebody who's somewhat accountable to you in the health club. 
Because right. the one thing that we've known, and there's actually some pretty interesting research on this, is that people who work with a trainer or a coach on a regular basis get better results than people who work out on their own. Specifically for what you mentioned, they, they, mm -hmm. they, their motivation is there, they just don't quite know what to do. And, and that mm -hmm. really, I'm giving a pitch for the personal training profession, but that's because I believe strongly in it. And I, I really think it can be a great resource for people yeah. who, want, who, who know, okay, I need to exercise, but I don't know what to do, or I just want to make sure I'm doing the right thing for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and as with everything else, um, what your issues are, and we won't, I'm not saying it's negative. I mean, it could be positive things. You know, maybe yeah. you've outgrown a particular exercise or something but that that changes as well right so that always doing the same exercises every single time it kind of limits limits you it it, it really does i mean look any exercise and this is this is for the listener anything yeah. that you do is better than nothing i Even absolutely if you do, you agree know, a, a, you know a little bit of something is better than a lot of nothing mm -hmm. but for yeah. best results, the analogy I use is Caddyshack, the movie Caddyshack. Uh -huh. Now I'm a I'm a Gen Xer. Uh, you know, I was born right in the early '70s, so Caddyshack was on TV quite a bit when I was a you know teenager growing up. Mm -hmm. But and Caddyshack is a very funny movie with Chevy Chase, Rodney Dangerfield. But you can only watch Caddyshack so many times before it becomes boring. You know, uh -huh. no matter, what, yeah. and that's kind of where, what what happens with your body and exercise. If you do in the exor same exercise program too often, it becomes like Caddyshack. It just it mm -hmm. doesn't have the same effect. And that really is, is something important for people to understand is it doesn't mean you change everything, but but changing your, your exercise program every three to four months, is, and that doesn't seems pretty frequent, but changing that frequently is the best way to just to keep keep your body working and get results. And, and the focus and let me be clear, when I talk about working and results, I'm talking about health. I'm, I'm not one of these personal trainers who's sitting there, you have to have six pack abs, you have to bench press. I don't believe in that. I, I really mm -hmm. don't. I just believe yeah. that we, we exercise to be healthy and that when done mm -hmm. right, we can use exercise to manage the aging process. Yeah, no, and that, and that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So is it, is it best then to just, maybe switch out one type of exercise to something else and not, not, not like switching up the whole thing. That could be one, like, that could be one option. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. For example, like instead of using an elliptical runner, maybe walk on the treadmill for a little bit or, or vice versa. If you walk on the treadmill, try the elliptical runner for a little bit, mm -hmm. you're just going to use the muscles differently. And you, mm -hmm. and, and that's really what, there's something, there's a concept of variability and the body craves variability. When you look at the time motion analysis, very rarely do we perform the exact same movement the exact same way twice. There's a little bit of inherent motor variability in everything we mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's just the body wants that, right? And, and anyway, we, it just, we need to be able to change it on a regular basis because right. the research show that after about eight to 12 weeks, the body adapts to a form of stimulus and it becomes less effective the more we do it. So going back to people who aren't going to the gym at the moment in particular, but yeah. even overall, as people get older, they tend to go out to fewer places and, and things. Um, are, especially if, if you're doing things with any kind of equipment, is there some equipment that has multiple kinds of exercises that you can do on it so maybe you can switch out using the same so you don't have to create your own gym in the garage you know with all these different yeah. pieces of equipment no i love that i mean one of the one of my favorite pieces of home equipment um and it's it's in my second book but not the first book okay. but one of my favorite pieces is the trx um and the trx is actually was based in the san francisco area mm -hmm. And the, the TR, the TRX for, for listeners, it's those black, if you've seen those black and yellow straps in the gym, the black yeah. and yellow things hanging off with handles, what yeah. it was is it was created by a former Navy SEAL who used his, basically his parachute handles as a way, as a system for body weight training. And oh. it, it's really, it's, and, and he, the way he explains it is he needed a way to stay, to, to work out when he was, yeah. when he was in a country where six foot tall white guys stand out. And so because that, you know, and 
I guess they were operating at night or whatever and, and need need uh -huh. to work out during the day but couldn't yeah. leave wherever they were stationed. Anyway, so that's how we created the TRX. And I've been a huge, huge fan of the product because it allows for a wide variety of exercises uh -huh. and you don't have to be you don't have to be that experienced. It's really TRX does a great job. They have a whole app, they have a whole online community, mm. a whole YouTube mm -hmm. page. That yep. there are a variety of resources and it's used by a number of NFL. I mean, it's just, I'm a big fan of the product. So the TRX uh -huh. is one. Um, another one is just two pairs of dumbbells, a lighter pair and a heavier pair. Okay. And then you can do a number of different dumbbell exercises. So I, those are, would be the basic ones would be like a TRX and, and dumbbells. Uh -huh. um, and those are pretty universal. Those are pretty, and, and yeah. from there, then you can branch out and add a bunch of other stuff, but that would be the basic, the basic equipment. Okay. Okay. No, that sounds that sounds great. I I actually have a couple pairs of dumbbells. I just bought a ten pound one, but then I oh, that's great for one reason or another. But then I then I can't. What did I do? I don't know. I did something and hurt myself, and all of a sudden oh. I didn't do anything for about two or three weeks, and then it was like, oh God, no, the ten pounds way too heavy for me. Got to go back to my my combination of a five pound and a two pound, and get work well, back up. <laughs> but but that's but no it, it's number one it's important to listen to your body and not overstress yeah. it but then number two it is important to stress it and that this is such yeah. a fine line yeah. and and I've recently I, I know this sounds a little juvenile but I've recently been describing exercise as kind of like Goldilocks and the three bears right yeah. because Papa <laughs> Bear is too much and we don't want to do too much exercise because believe yeah. me. Yeah. Too much exercise, especially too much high intensity exercise, yeah. overstresses the body is no good. So we don't want to be Papa Bear. Mama Bear is not doing enough exercise to make any difference. That's exercising maybe one day a week, maybe mm -hmm. every once every other week. That's yeah. not really doing enough to make much of a difference. So everybody needs to find their own baby bear. Everybody needs to find the right activity that, that's fun for them. Mm -hmm. and, that's, yeah. and that's the most important thing is find an activity that's fun that you're going to yeah. look forward to doing. And if it's that Zumba class two or three nights a week after work, go for it. But then maybe after, after three months of Zumba, look for another dance class, another dance format. Maybe uh, okay. go back okay. to old school step. And But find the stuff that you enjoy and then just figure out so how you'll to make do it. work for you. Yeah, yeah, so you'll do it. That That's the biggest, that's the biggest thing, right? Um, yeah, I know. I keep saying I'm going to go back to, to doing some yoga for a while, but I haven't done it in years. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got I got to find someplace in the house that's got a big enough area <laughs> to be able to do it. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> that's and our that, biggest problem. <laughs> and that can be an issue, right? But yoga is yeah. one of those. You know, I I go through phases where I start doing yoga for a little bit, then I stop, then I start, then I stop. But it's one of those I need to get back to doing it because I mean, when I do it regularly, I feel the benefits of it, yeah. and I feel yeah. better. And I have to say. This is for any male listeners. I have to say now at my age of, of being almost being a few months away from turning 50 myself, I would rather be able to do certain yoga poses than bench press 315 pounds. Because, you know, being able to hold a yoga pose is to me is infinitely more challenging than mm -hmm. just pushing a weight 12 to 14 inches off my chest. You know, and that, that really uh -huh. is, it's something that, that was very humbling. When I first tried yoga, I was like, oh my God, this is hard. Yeah. <laughs> and so... And it just, but I like the way, I mean, the mo moving into it, the breath work, yeah. everything. It's just, it's such a cool way to move and feel your body move. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, no, I agree. I agree for sure. For sure. And the, the TRX, I actually did that at the gym that I used to go to. That's no longer available to me. Um, and the, and the trainers there used, they had all the, the TRX stuff up in the, and they did TRX classes and all that kind of stuff. But, but um, she had me doing some of them. But I kept trying to do it on my own when I would just go in. And I could never get it. I could never get it to work. <laughs> it takes it does, It does. takes a little bit of practice. But yeah. what I like about it, though, is once you kind of learn the balance of it and, and learn it, it really is. It's a very, it, it's just a very portable, very easy to do. Yeah. And like usually this this time of year, it's winter time right now. When we record this, sometimes I'll I'll throw uh, my TRX in the backpack, and uh -huh. when it's dark out and there are no kids at the playground, that's when I would do a little TRX workout, do a little uh -huh. outdoor work. I'll do a little walk around my neighborhood uh -huh. and do a little outdoor workout down at the playground when no kids uh -huh. are there, just using the TRX and using some of the playground equipment. 
Yeah, I, I don't. I never do it when there are kids there. I just that's it's their playground, not mine. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's later during during uh, colder times of year. For me, it's a fun work because especially when we've been inside all day. You want to get outside. It just it's not even that late. It's six thirty, seven o'clock at night, so mm -hmm. it's not that late. But it's a great way anyway. So that's one of the ways I love yeah. using the TRX. Yeah, yeah. No, and I um, I'm I'm glad you reminded me of that because that is something actually in some ways doesn't really even take up much room. I mean, you just put it on a door or whatever, close the door, and you yeah. know you just. You just need as much room off of the door, right, to be able to do it. So it's almost like as long if you can open the door all the way, you can probably put the TRX on it. Yeah, no, that that's the room you need. And and again, yeah. the company does has great resources on there. They have an app and they have a yes. YouTube channel to show how to use it. And and I just I, I think it's such a it's one of those things when when I saw it, when I first saw it, I kind of scratched my head a little bit, but then I. I used it one time. I was like, okay, I get it. And it's one of those things that came out about 15 years ago. And the last 15 long? years has become oh like God. a staple foundational piece of fitness equipment. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, thank you for reminding me. I'm going to go, yeah. go look, go back and look at that again and see my husband does weights and, and all of those kinds of things. But um, I don't know if he would get into the TRX. Maybe. We'll see. Well, a lot, hey, a lot of NFL players do it, and the the military does kit out their uh, their special operations teams with it because when they go in the field, it's an easy way. Like you said, it's very portable, and they yeah. have special military units that are that are lighter and easy, you know, a little bit easier. But anyway, so I mean that that's always that's always how you sell guys on anything. The pro athletes do it in the military special operations. If you tell a guy that, a, I mean, but seriously, uh, the special operations teams are meditating and doing yoga. If you want to know what Mar Marsoc is not that far away from me up at Camp Pendleton, and of uh -huh. course the Navy yeah. SEALs are in Coronado, right? And you talk to those guys when you when you talk to any any special operator, one of their key components of any fitness program is either going to be meditation and or yoga, one or the other, if yeah. not both. I mean they yeah. the the they they really understand and, and and appreciate the benefits of both of both that. And if, if it's good for them, hey, it's something I've been trying to do more of for myself yeah yeah oh no absolutely absolutely and and i am a a very big proponent of meditation um for oh my god when did i start oh, i don't know i guess i was in my 20s i started a serious meditation practice and then have gone on different different kinds and stuff so it, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, the, 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 the whole field and study of meditation to me is fascinating. And I really think that in the next with, especially when, when you start looking at all the work of, of everything going on in the psychedelics right now with psychedelics in that community, I do think there's going to be in, in five to 10 years, I already know there's some, some yogis and fitness coaches doing retreats. Uh -huh. they, they kind of go tangential with like ayahuasca yeah. retreats down in, mm -hmm. in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. but I, I really think that between meditation, we're, we're on the precipice of really understanding so much more about how the brain really controls the body and, and, yes. and unlocking, or at least understanding that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Oh no, absolutely, absolutely. And just um, realizing that all you need is just a little bit, especially like MDMA and, and some of that kind of stuff. You just, it, the micro dosing that they're doing now, Right. Well, and, and that's honestly, but, but that's what high intensity exercise does. I don't write uh -huh. about it much in the book, but uh -huh. high intensity exercise stimulates uh, release of uh, endocannabinoids. So the uh -huh. same, the same. So we have our own internal cannabinoid system. I mean, that's what uh -huh. THC and CBD. That's right. There's external that react with the body's internal mechanism. But uh -huh. part of the runner's high that people feel if you're a runner, okay. that, that's your body's own endogenous yeah. cannabinoids because the body will use internal cannabinoids as a pain as a pain reliever along yeah. with dopamine and serotonin so they're there and i mean that's a huge trick if people are feeling hey i'm if you're feeling a little bit down a little bit whatever mindset go for a run go for a walk go for a strenuous walk yeah. or a strenuous hike it's amazing mm -hmm. how different you will feel at 30 40 minutes of just heart rate being up and breathing a little bit hard and uh -huh. it's the neurochemical it's like all the brain chemicals that really that that a lot of people don't realize that's the benefit of exercise it's not just 
having yeah. big muscles or looking a certain way. It's the fact that it allows your body to function at its optimal capacity because mm. you're using it the way it's designed to be used. Wow. Huh. That, yeah. Well, that, that explains it. I mean, I ran for many, 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 many years. Um, and, um, and, and that, that explains it. Why, you know, you just yeah, go out it, there and, and you always feel better afterwards. You always feel better. Well, and and that and that at the be honest, I mean, hey, look, like I said, as I'm getting closer to fifty, trust me, yeah. my warm ups my warm ups keep getting longer and longer and longer. <laughs> yeah. So but the thing is what might and the reason why I say that, I might be a little bit sore and achy, especially yeah. if I've been sitting all day. I might right. be a little sore and achy when I first get up and start moving. So I completely empathize with people who sometimes feel a little bit sore. But here's the thing. Once you move a little bit and your heart rate gets up, your body will produce these chemicals and all of a sudden yeah. you, you don't feel sore. You really yeah. don't. Like I, yeah. I can kind of, I'll, I'll be a little bit creaky and a little bit like old man-ish when I get out of my chair after a while, yeah. but yep. then get the heart rate up for a little bit to move around a little bit and you don't feel it. And, and so it really, and I have, I have arthritis in my knee. I'm actually, mm -hmm. I'm actually a spokesperson for a, an arthritis medication uh, produced by GlaxoSmithKline because um, uh -huh. I have arthritis in my knee and, and, and arthritis in my wrist and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but the best thing that we can do is just move. And, and that's yes. where for a lot of is movement really does make you feel better if you do it consistently. And that's the thing. If you yes. sit for a period of time, when you first move the first two or three minutes, no, it's not going to feel good. But you need to move for, for a period of, of 10, 12 minutes. And all of a sudden, that's when all those yes. chemicals and hormones kick in and we feel so much better. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I totally I totally agree. Um, the other the other question I have for you is um, on a per very personal question here. Um, I personally like to do exercises and, and stuff like that before I go to bed. But everything I read says, oh, no, no, don't do it then. Don't do it then because you get everything, you know, everything's all warmed up and all this kind of stuff. And, and it'll take a while to get back. But boy, I exercise, I get into bed and I'm just like out like that. So is it just, is it just a personal, everybody's body's different? Is that the? Every, Susan, that's a great, that's a great question and great point. Everybody's body is different. Physiologically, mm -hmm. when we exercise, we release certain hormones and neurotransmitters that can make energy more available in the body. But if you feel that it helps you wind down at the end of the day, then, I mean, there's, there's no there's no reason why you shouldn't do that right i uh -huh. mean some people some people can't start the day without exercising some people like yourself probably couldn't end the day with it and and trust me having worked in health clubs for years i do know that people come to the gym at 9 9 30 at night for my you husband, know, a, a late my husband night used workout. to do that yeah his, his gym closed so he's not going anywhere but yeah. um but yeah he'd go he'd go 10 11 o'clock at night you know i'd be sleeping when he got back yeah, and, and some people like that i mean yeah. if, hey and, and, and the thing is the most important thing is just do it consistently i mean yeah. do it in the first thing in the morning do it late at night it doesn't matter as long as you're doing something consistently yeah. if it works for your body it works for your body oh yeah yeah no and i think in in a lot of ways um you know and and i think he just like a lot of other people um and this is actually going to the gym i mean we bought some stuff that he's using um and i use sometimes use them but there's a lot of people who you know at the beginning of covid didn't didn't want to gamble right with going to the gym um and and then when they kind of opened up the gyms then it was like okay well you know well maybe i'll go because i but really not that wonderful to be wearing a mask um but they wanted to wear the mask that not not <laughs> it just doesn't work real well when you work out um but you know there are a lot of gyms that just have closed down and did not reopen yeah well a couple companies took the opportunity to reorganize and get out of unfavorable leases I mean, that, that was one of the things. So a couple of companies went into bankruptcy in order to sense. kind of restructure and, and to get rid. So there is some yeah. of that going on, right? I mean, some yeah. companies 
looked at that and, and said that a, a couple of companies grew during this time. I mean, a couple of companies yeah. saw the opportunity of certain businesses going out. I mean, I, there, I heard stories about it as one chain was closing their clubs, somebody else was coming in and basically just spray, I mean, but literally just yeah. they, they had capital. Um, and there are some mergers in, in the last the last year, um, last year, okay. year and a half. So yeah, things are gonna change, but I, what I really, and I firmly believe this, is that moving forward, because I do think that remote work is here to stay. I think a lot of offices are allowing workers flexibility to do remote work, those who can. And yep. when that happens, as that happens, the gym is going to become one of our social outlets of the day, right? If we're not, mm -hmm. normally we go to work and work's where we see other people, That's we right. can interact, That's right. yeah. even though Betty from accounting might be a little bit annoying and Stu from wherever to Stu from sales yeah. is always a little whatever, but they're just the people we hang out with. And, and yeah. but, but remote working, I mean, I firmly believe that, that the health club fitness center is going to become partly the community center. Because yes, you can still do virtual workouts and yes, you can work out at home, but there are going to be those days where, gosh, you just want to go see, you know, that your friends are going to be at class or, you know, yeah. that great instructor who always has great things, fun things yeah. to say is going to be there. Or you just want to go be around other people. I mean, there's a reason why right. those of us that work remotely or independently, why we sometimes go to coffee shops is we just want to be around other people. I mean, that, that yeah. that's innate in our human nature. Uh huh. Oh no! Absolutely, absolutely. We're not. We're not um, single. We're not singles by design. No, yeah. no. You know, and never, and never have been. So, I mean, I know some some people prefer spending a lot of time alone, um, and that's fine. But even even those people, you know, at certain levels, they still had good friends or whatever. So I, I, I would tend to agree with you. Um, you know, I have to say for the last three months or more, I've been looking around trying to find a gym that's not outrageously expensive. Yeah. So. And, and that's, I mean, it always is you get what you pay for, right? You get, it all depends on the staffing, depends on mm -hmm. the facilities, the amenities. And I'm at that age where I don't mind paying for a place that has a nice uh, locker room <laughs> and nice, nice showers. I mean, it, in my yeah. mind, it makes I use it often enough and I know that there'll be times when I need to go to work or need to go to places afterwards. So mm -hmm. um, I wanna, wanna be able to have a nice shower. And that said, I mean, doing what I do and being in the industry, I actually have two different gym memberships. I work uh, at, I, 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 I teach part-time at one health club. Uh -huh. I have two different gym memberships just because I want the convenience of, depending on what where my day takes me, I wanna have different options for what I can do during the day. So. I look yeah. at it, I, I always look at, at a health club as a necessary expense. And the more I use it, the better value it becomes. And that just means yeah. whether it's for classes or for workouts oh, no. or whatever. Yeah, Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my latest is to, there's one thing that that's um, related to the medical association that we, that we go to. So I'm going to go check that out. And, and that's actually... A lot of people don't realize that their health insurance might have a discount with certain health clubs mm -hmm. and you and a lot of health clubs might not say that because they don't want to give you the discount of the membership but if mm -hmm. you call your health insurance or check on your health a lot of health insurance right. companies will have it on their website but yes. health insurance companies yep. might have a discounted or, or a, a corporate rate at large health club companies like 24 hour fitness or la fitness so that's yep. one of those things that people should check check with your health Absolutely. insurance provider that they might have special access. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that people don't know because yeah. the membership person at a health club won't say it to you. Right. Oh, no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This one is, um, I can't remember what it's called plus something or I don't know. They seem to have a lot of them around. So it's not too plus far one. away. It's... It might be plus yeah, plus one is, uh, fit, uh yeah. Europe and Northern California. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fitness. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's fitness plus, but there's total, I think there's total fitness up there. Total fitness is up, uh, has a lot of yeah. clubs up in uh, Yeah. There's SF, SF fitness, I think San Francisco fitness. And, and, um, there are a few of the uh, 24 hour, but the closest one that's closed that was where my husband used to go. That closed yeah, well, the, the pandemic and did not reopen. Yeah, that the the one one of the reasons why I'm living in the apartment I'm living in is there's a 24 hour fitness uh, one of the bigger ones across the street 
that closed down during the pandemic. So I'm a little, I got a little mm, sore spot with it. Cause I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm here. I mean, but also, also the other reason why I live where I do is there's mount, great mountain biking and hiking. So I got uh, about a mile in one direction. I got great mountain biking and hiking. And then a quarter mile, the other direction, just up the street a little bit is a yeah. shopping center with a grocery store and 24 hour fitness. So that's, well, like, that's why I picked. You're set. What else well, do you need it, in that's, life? And that's, but that, but that's part of like, but that's part of the fitness mindset. I mean, I, I kind of bring that up because yeah. I was very strategic in looking for having yes. an active lifestyle and wanting to make have an active lifestyle be a priority. I could yes. be saving a few dollars, be living somewhere else, but being this close, I don't have to get in my car to drive to go to mountain biking, or you yeah. know, I can go hiking any time that's just right yeah. in the street for me. And, oh, and having the, having a health club, be, walking to the health club and walking to the grocery store are both viable options that I do on a regular basis. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I did do with the health club and it was open, but that's, but that just, it's making that choice of it. Okay. If I can live somewhere, why not live somewhere that's going to support an active lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Oh no, I think that's great. That's, that's really, really fantastic. Cause I know the the gym that I used to go to was actually in a corporate headquarters mm -hmm. and they, they let, people from the neighborhood get memberships to help support it right yeah yeah and then COVID happened and everybody stopped coming into work and the gym closed and they went all online but only for the people who worked for the corporation mm, okay so that was the end of mine which was ah, talk about being perfect I was literally was walkable you know it was oh, a wow. block away yeah. Well, here's another thing that, that people uh -huh. might not realize that listeners might not realize is community, um, not community, but university rec centers, university student rec centers. A lot yeah. of universities, especially bigger universities, have the student rec centers are magnificent. They're like full yeah. because they have they have the student fees, which help that, that pay yeah. for the budget. But the student rec centers are like full service health clubs at bigger uh -huh. state schools. Yeah. But people who live in the community can buy a community membership to those. So if, if people live near a, a university in, in a university uh -huh. town or live near a larger school, they might just want to check with that student rec center because there might be a program that, and those are usually affordable. Uh -huh. they're, like I said, they, they're always buying new equipment. Student rec centers are always buying new equipment because they have the budget for it. Uh -huh. And it's, it's a great, it's a great resource. And they have very, the, the staff is awesome because they're, a lot of the staff are students who are in their, in their exercise science programs. So yeah. it's a great place for people that are in, in a community that has a university like that. That could be a great resource for an exercise facility that might not otherwise occur to them. No, that, that's a fantastic idea. That's a fantastic idea. I know Berkeley's, Berkeley's um, athletic facilities were open to, to everybody, at least when I was there, which was a long time ago, and they've upgraded it all yeah since since then and it's 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 wonderful it's a little too far away for us to go on a regular basis but um but that's such a, a great idea i wonder if the the local city college has yeah it. I, I, it depends i mean some of the city some of the junior colleges uh may or may not have the same program i i've, I've been an mm -hmm. adjunct faculty at one junior college and i don't think we did it there but that's because mm -hmm. the sports teams they didn't have a separate strength and conditioning uh studio for the sports teams the sports teams use the facility so they didn't want to let the community in so they okay. would have the football and baseball and volleyball teams conditioning in there and they yeah. just didn't want to have the community when when the athletes were in there yeah no that makes sense that makes sense no but that's that's a that's a really good idea i'll, I'll start checking around and see what's around there's a lot of community centers as well i know that have a lot of them have um gyms and and things like that that you can that you can join. Well, and so, I really think anyway. that when we get the data, well, I yeah. think when we get the data in, we're going to see that over the last two years that we've been that we've been dealing with COVID nineteen is that people who are fit and make their health a priority, if they had if they got COVID, knock on wood, hopefully they didn't. Obviously, there are going to be a few outliers of people who passed, but for the majority of people who are fit and make their health a priority, mm -hmm. it was a bad cold and, and not much more. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think I, I think we're going to see in the next two or three years, I think we're going to see a huge shift of more fitness and exercise in mainstream health and wellness. I think finally, I think this is going to be the thing that's going to finally kind of like get people to realize that, hey, 
I need if I need to exercise regularly and stay healthy. I can't get unhealthy. Right. I need to stay healthy. And already yeah. the early numbers are reporting that all around the health club industry. Some areas, some regions are back at pre-COVID numbers at, at 19, wow. uh, 2019 numbers, uh -huh. and other regions aren't far behind. And, and these are from wow. different from different financial companies. Like the financial companies are the backbone. They they do like all the back end work at health clubs, and the uh -huh. financial companies are reporting that the dues they're collecting are in some regions are at 2019 levels. Other regions are pretty close to it. So that's wow, that's, that's relatively it's re relatively accurate data, but. I just think, yeah. and what we're seeing is more young people coming back into fitness centers. Mm. Um, the the kind of the over 50, over 60 crowd hasn't returned yet, but uh -huh. it's younger people coming back, partly because they started working out from home and they just want to be able to continue continue doing that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, I I that make that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and I'm sure that the health clubs that that you're aware of as well you know spend a lot of money on their air systems and cleaning and all of those kinds of things to make sure that people are more comfortable coming in well and, and for listeners they couldn't see me nodding my head but that's been the big the big spending area is health clubs have really i i will give a lot of credit to them is there's been a lot of work and a lot of um collaboration among the different companies who are normally competitors but mm -hmm. now they're kind of like they're they're sharing in industry calls and industry roundtables because at this point so many people are working together it's like hey we're, we gotta stay open and so you're seeing some really cool collaboration happening um but yeah what we're starting to see are people really health club companies really taking a vested interest in doing a better job because they recognize that that they have a responsibility to keep people healthy and, and so you're seeing that shift and yeah that you're looking at they're doing cleaning differently they're really forcing it um, the health club company I work for twice a day, and, and I, I help participate in it today. Actually, um, they have twice a day like all staff cleaning, where you kind of just you just go give it a once over and just kind of give uh -huh. um, yeah give it a little bit just give it a little bit extra love and a little bit extra uh, TLC um, yeah. just to keep the members to try to do the best we can um, for the members. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Because we all used to do that for ourselves anyways, even before COVID, right? Because you yeah. never knew who was coming in with the flu or or whatever exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. and and on that note so many you know once upon a time what drew, drove me nuts as an instructor when i was a group, I, I still teach group fitnesses but fitness classes mm -hmm. but part-time but what drives me nuts is sometimes people come to class they're sniffling they're, i'm not feeling well and they say i'm just going to sweat it out and it's just like you want to hit them on the side of the head and be like stay at home but people yeah. will be like sniffling and sneezing and you're like are you okay i'm just here to sweat it out and it's like it, it doesn't because exercise does, does weaken, especially especially vigorous exercise does weaken the immune system. Again, mm -hmm. it's one of those things about exercise where a little bit can strengthen the immune system, but too much exercise can weaken the immune system, especially if you're already sick. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, how can it strengthen something that that's already under attack? <laughs> that's exactly no. It, that and that's where if you have a cold, if you're not uh -huh. feeling well, do not go to the gym. You will right. not be able to sweat it out. It does, does not. I, I'm no doctor, uh, but I do know enough about physiology to know that it, the virus or bacteria, whatever you have, doesn't quite doesn't sweat out like that. You you no, can't no. detox. You're, you're going to share it. All you're going to do is exactly. share it. That's the only thing you're going to be really good at is sharing it. And, and sure <laughs> enough, after a class where somebody's sniffling in it, within two or three days, usually the instructor gets sick too. But yeah, it's. Uh. Oh, well, on it that note, <laughs> yeah. well, thank you. Thank you very much. This is, this has really been a, a very enlightening um, discussion and I really enjoyed it a lot. Well, thank you. And, and, and I want you, I mean, listeners should understand that, Hey, what I don't like about my industry, what I don't like about fitness is we make it about appearance. And person, mm -hmm. that's not my belief at all. My belief is that fitness is having the ability to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Meaning that fitness gives you the freedom to go out and live life the way you want to. And that's mm -hmm. what I try to do. The books I write, everything I try to do is I want people to understand that exercise is the means for enhancing your quality of life. Whatever you want that to be, you can use exercise to, to do whatever you want to do, more of what you want to do in life or make your quality of life better. And that's what I hope we can reframe and reposition exercise as, 
as a life enhancer, not as something we have to do, but as something we get to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I would, I would, I would definitely agree. And, and you feel better doing it. Yep. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. Yep. I mean, it's, Hey, I'm getting ready to go out for my, my walk right now. I'm listening to, unfortunately not your podcast. I'm listening to another podcast. Go get for a little walk, get my fresh air. And I invite your listeners to do the same at, at some point in your day, hopefully you get out and, uh, and stretch your legs and get a little fresh air yourself. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't get out today just cause it's been raining off and on all day. In fact, it's pouring right now. So the, the wind is blowing and I can hear it on the, you probably can't hear it, but it's very loud in here. You, you can hear that. We had that, we had that yesterday here down in San Diego and it Oof. was, uh, we had, it felt, it's funny after being here for so many years now, it does, uh, I, I grew up on the East coast and a winter storm out snow, but now here, like winter storm is at range. You don't see the sun for two days. It's just a slightly different. Yeah. But it's, it's still, you adjust to it. it. It is a different feeling. You, you definitely feel the difference. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Okay. Well, let me, let me end with my usual little spiel here, which is that I am not a doctor. Neither of us are doctors. This is not to be seen as medical advice. And if you are having any kind of health problems, please go and see your doctor or go to the emergency room, whichever is more appropriate. And with that being said, thank you again to Pete McCall. And um, I will see all of you next week. <laughs>